At this time, I'd like to introduce to you, everybody knows Linda Williams, our new executive director. Thank you, Mike. Thank you, Peter. Well, on behalf of the Chamber Board, I want to welcome you to our annual State of the Cities event. Um, as you know, the State of the Cities is our signature annual event. And because we are blessed to have two communities in our chamber, we have this wonderful tradition of trading off every other year. And of course, it's Hazel Park's turn this year. And it's extra special to me because back in the late 90s, I actually started here in the city of Hazel Park, working in the mayor and city manager's office. So it's, I basically come full circle now as the executive director of the chamber. So it's been very, very, very much home sweet home, and I really appreciate the warm welcome back. So thank you. <laughs> we have a jam-packed program for tonight. Um, I have the fun task of keeping every, making sure everything stays on, ta on task. That's why I'm, I'm like a drill sergeant to, uh, tonight a little bit. So without further delay, I want to kick off the event with a thank you to our host. So hopefully, Mike, well, I see Mike. The Eastern Palace Club, Mike, Adam, and Dustin are the business partners for welcoming us, especially when they just opened, believe it or not, only a couple months ago, in January, right? Yeah. And they are already making multiple lists as the hottest bar in Metro Detroit. And then I'm talking about Detroit News, Metro Times, I mean, it's quite a bit of them. I couldn't even find them. I mean, there was at least four or five already, and it's only two months in the business. So thank you, Mike. Thank you to the business partners for welcoming us and seeing our host this year. Thank you, everybody, for coming out. And an equal thanks to our caterer, uh, Smoke Lotus Barbecue. Hopefully Jamie and Eric are nearby. They're probably in the kitchen. Um, again, a fairly new business. They're just a couple months ahead of you, right? So, um, as you can imagine, for a barbecue place, there's a lot of prep that goes into it. So, you can clearly tell that Jamie and Eric, um, it's a work of love. So, we really, really appreciate them. You know, they've been wonderful to work with, especially with some of the exchanges. I mean, we're, we were a sold out event and they were so accommodating to add some more, you know, dinner, dinner tickets to our event tonight. So thank you so much to Jamie and Eric. They're in the back. Make sure you tell them thank you. And of course, this event would not have been possible without our volunteers. The committee members that made up of our board members, city leaders and business leaders, they only met only a few months ago to plan for this event, and virtually all of them were voluntold, my favorite word. So planning for this event was super easy from both sides, if you ask me. Uh, I want to do a special thank you to my Hazel Park city leaders, or they're in the back over there, especially the city manager's office and the digital media team. Brian, thank you so much. I know I drove you crazy, but thank you so much. They were so generous to throw in so many city, city resources at, for this event. Uh, I, I'm very blessed. They provided all the tables, all the chairs. They gave it our police department, my chief, the, all the police the auxiliary officers there. One of our biggest concerns was, of course, parking. And I thought they did a wonderful job. So thank you to the, the whole Casey Park team. And of course, we would not have uh, held this event without the generous support and financial donation from our sponsors. They're all listed on your table, that you see on the table. However, their generosity makes it all worthwhile to recognize them publicly. And I want to start off with the top. Lauren, I know you're in the back there, from Consumers Energy, our event and top sponsor. Baldwin. Baldwin House that sponsored the Polynesian dancers. They were amazing. And then we had several businesses contribute to the table sponsorship. It was a kind of a team effort. And that's, uh, I know Nicole's here from Sam's Club. Paul from Ideation Orange, based here in Hazel Park. 
And then, of course, our BDT smoke shop in Hazel Park. The beautiful fresh lays that were directly shipped from Hawaii. This is the real legit thing. It's proudly sponsored by two um, local businesses. Uh, Kurt's Custom Promotion. Kurt, you're here somewhere, right? And our friends and longtime chamber member, Ever Survived Members Credit Union. We got Renee and Nicole there. Thank you so much. The beautiful dessert table. Everyone is required to take one. Okay? All right. Uh, as made possible by uh, three of our sponsors. Humana Insurance, Andrew here, there he is. And then we have the folks from Al's Car Wash. This is a new development that's going on on 14 Mile Road, in their former Applebee site. I see some of them came from corporate out of town, so I know where's my Al's. There they are in the back there. And of course, our good friends from Comcast, you got Tim and you got Eric. There they are in the back. And then finally, we got some uh, um, other couple other folks that uh, made the night possible too. We got Mich Monique from Michigan School of Government Credit Union. The beautiful balloon display that we worked so hard on this morning. Thank you to my volunteers. That was a fun project, right? But that was made possible by Michigan School of Government Credit Union. The beautiful all, all the party favorites that are on the table right now. That was made possible by our friends at the reserve. That took several days, but there's. Some wonderful things in there. If you have a look, go look. There's some treats in there. Okay. Um, and then, if any of our business leaders also stepped up to offer things that we needed for this event, um, such as all of those posters, all of those print materials that you see on the tables there, and even all the videotaping without charge. So, I want to do a big and special thank you to Mike and Sonia from Artec Printing. I take advantage of Mike this program. He did a lot of printing for us. Phyllis and Marianne from Science and Design, thank you for all the beautiful posters. And uh, let's see here, and Tony, I know you, Tony, I'm going to give you credit because you, you're, yes, you're going to get the credit because he's offering to do all of the videos, special, capturing the special moments for us. Thank you, Tony. And then, lastly, I am very blessed with not only very generous business leaders, but an awesome board that didn't hesitate to contribute to make this event very successful and have all their support. So all, I, I, for the interest of time, all my board members raise their hands. Thank you, thank you so much. Thank you all for coming out. I'm Rosalind Brassie, I'm the mayor of Boston Heights, and I'm excited to join everyone tonight. Uh, tonight we're going to talk about the successes and the future of our two great cities. And I want to thank our hosts, the Eastern Palace Club yeah, and the Madison Heights ha Hazel Park Chamber, a good excuse to come as well as Mike Webb and uh, his team at Hazel Park for putting on an excellent program for us. And I also want to express my gratitude to my fellow Madison Heights City Council members, few of whom are here tonight. I also want to show my appreciation for our city staff for their continuous efforts, their enthusiasm, and their commitment to providing excellent services to our businesses and for their critical contributions to our residents' quality of life. Most importantly, though, I want to thank the residents and the owners of the Madison Heights businesses, the dedicated business owners that choose to locate their businesses in Madison Heights and everyone who supports them are the reason that we can share the successes that we've had today. And I'm happy to report tonight that the state of Madison Heights is strong. Citywide, we are completing unprecedented capital improvements to our city facilities, parks, and public safety, infrastructure, and equipment. In addition, thanks to staff, we have been the recipient of many grant programs and partnerships that will pay dividends for years to come and help us provide excellent services to everyone who works, lives, or just visits Madison Heights. Over the last two years, we have changed how we are tracking construction and new businesses coming into the city to provide a more accurate picture of our changing business demographics. 2022 was a return to the levels of development activity that we saw pre-pandemic and the Community Development Department 
approved about $26 million to new construction, bringing the total construction value still ongoing in Madison Heights to just over $37 million. Many of our ongoing projects are expected to take multiple years to complete, and with nationwide labor shortages, supply chain issues, and inflation, some of our other projects continue to be delayed, and it does remain a challenging construction season for developers and for business owners. But we continue to meet with businesses interested in start, starting up or expanding into Madison Heights. As well, over the last year, I have met with representatives of various consulates to highlight the attractiveness of Madison Heights as a multicultural hub and the perfect suburb for international companies looking to set up in the Metro Detroit area. I've also spoken with developers and others involved in commercial real estate about the changes that we have been making in our ordinances to be more attractive for investment and development. We have discussed visions for various uh, vacant and underutilized parcels that could be developed as mixed-use sites and multifamily homes in various sizes so that we can better house those who want to move to the city but cannot find a next home in our existing housing stock. We are excited to welcome new businesses representing a variety of industries. Notable examples include Michigan Roots Artisan Shop on John R. And, and give them a hand. They're a pretty cool, a pretty cool company. They have about 60 different uh, people who are making uh, items for them, the bulk of whom who live in the area, a lot who are Madison Heights and Hazel Park. So they really are supporting our local economy in numerous ways. Um, we also have industry innovators like Systematic Manufacturing Inc. And we saw renovations and expansions of existing businesses, including the expansion in workspaces and offices for Masters Millwork on Stevenson, and then the beautiful addition of the seating area for Mia's Bakery and Coffee Shop over on 14 Mile. In our downtown area, we saw the outdoor seating and parking lot expansion at Woodpile Barbecue, a complete exterior renovation at Diamond Gyms, and the relocation of the supply house into its own space, making way for the growth of Cadillac Straits Brewery. <laughs> Many of these projects were supported by local grants and programs offered by our Downtown Development Authority, including facade and sign grants and the Redevelopment Liquor License Program. But along with business investments, we have also seen a consistent amount of reinvestment in our neighborhoods. Our building department processed over 500 building permits in 2022, with around a million dollars of construction completed and close to another two million in ongoing projects. One of the most significant programs coming to Madison Heights in 2023 is our partnership with Oakland County Habitat for Humanity. The City and Oakland County Habitat recently partnered to submit a federal grant that allows us to assist homeowners in making much-needed home improvements. These funds can cover roofs, furnaces, accessibility, window, and much more. The awarded grant was $850,000, but that wasn't our only successful grant. We were also awarded MISHTA's Neighborhood Enhancement Program and Minor Home Repair Funding through the Community Development Block Grant which brings the total of minor home repair assistance funds to support our neighborhoods to just under a million dollars. If you have been to City Hall over the last few months, you can see that Madison Heights homeowners and businesses were not the only ones busy with renovations in 2022. Last year, the city broke ground on the largest capital investment in our history. This project includes the renovation and downsizing of City Hall, the renovation of the library and fire station number two, and the construction of the Civic Center Plaza that includes a larger active adult center and eight electric charging vehicle stations. This project is about 75% complete, with the grand opening being planned for this fall. So stay tuned. Hopefully I'll be inviting all of you up for that. Our capital investment doesn't stop there. Quality of life is a priority in Madison Heights, an attraction for residents and businesses. We've been working on repopulating the tree canopy for over five years, and I'm happy to report that for the past three years, we have invested heavily in this initiative, a move that has gotten us the award of the designation as a tree city. Keeping this as an annual priority, we planted over 250 trees in 2022. Our
Our focus locations include the Southside neighborhoods and the John R. Corridor, helping make these areas more walkable and business friendly. But it isn't just about the trees. Throughout the city, we have made significant improvements to our parks. This past year, we invested over a million dollars in parks improvements, with another million dollars planned each year for the next two years. These park improvements include a wide range of projects from replacing play structures to renovating baseball fields and new park lights. Last month, we renamed Ambassador Park to McGilvery Park in honor of County Commissioner Gary McGilvery, who has spent decades of his life in service to Madison Heights. Gary can't be with us tonight, but I would love for everyone to give him a round of applause. Now, along with, them, with renaming this park, we also partnered with Oakland County for them to assume and enhance the park. With this new partnership, the county will be investing almost $5 million for pickleball courts, a green bathroom to repair the walking path, and to add connector trails to the golf course and to John R. Now, as a city, we understand that investing in our community and working with residents and businesses are the way to long-term sustainability and success. Therefore, we are taking the time to make much needed changes to update our zoning ordinance to make it more user friendly and to include features to continue to make our city more attractive for investment. Last year, the city selected McKenna Associates to develop a complete rewrite of our zoning ordinance. McKenna staff have worked diligently with the Planning Commission and key stakeholders to develop a, plan, a zoning ordinance that is congruent with the goals of our 2020 master plan. It's easier to navigate and can better accommodate future business uses and their needs. We hope this much needed update adds to our clear, consistent, and smooth development process. A first draft was completed in February and staff anticipates having this ordinance in full effect later this year. I'm also pleased to announce that earlier this month I joined County Executive Coulter and the mayors of Oak Park, Pontiac, and Southfield for the official launch of the newly formed county-wide nonprofit, Oakland Thrive. We are looking forward to being a part of this new partnership and are already in talks with Thrive to host an open house for them in the city. Oakland County has numerous resources that benefit new and aspiring business owners, but too often the businesses that need them the most are unaware of these services or they have trouble accessing them. Oakland Thrive brings these resources and other useful expertise directly to storefronts throughout the county. We look forward to collaborating with Oakland Thrive in their efforts to support and grow the backbone of our local economy, small businesses. And if you're a small business here, give yourself a hand because you're the ones who make our cities run. In 2022, after years of court battles and many, many, many meetings with the EPA and EGLE, we finally celebrated the beginning of the demolition of electroplating services located at 901 and 945 959 East 10 Mile. And today, I'm happy to share with you that demolition, demolition and remediation of these three sites have been completed and the city has recently taken possession of the three parcels. We finally own them. We will continue to work with the state of Michigan to turn this former eyesore into a quality redevelopment opportunity that can serve as a catalyst for the entire corridor. As mayor, one of my jobs is to be a champion of Madison Heights outside the city boundaries. It is my job to look for opportunities to promote our community as a great place to live, to start a business, and to visit. Over the last couple of years, I have met with multiple groups to do just that. Madison Heights is home to a plethora of international and multicultural businesses, from our miles-long international cuisine that can be found just going down John R., to being home of both the American Islamic Community Center and the American Chinese Community Center, as well as the Mexican Consulate. I am proud of the strength of our multicultural relationships. It was my privilege to represent the city at the Mexican-American Bicentennial Celebration in December and to introduce the consulate to our Madison and Lanford school districts to further assist with educating our youth about the Spanish and Mexican cultures. And if everyone can take a moment, we have representatives from both the Madison and Lanford uh, school boards. If you can just raise your hand and everyone can acknowledge them, please. Thank you for everything, Thank you for everything that you do to help mold and educate our youth. 
Last year, after an invitation from Madison Heights Company, I enjoyed joining several other area mayors to celebrate the 30th annual Building Economic Bridges Gala, hosted by the Arab American Chamber of Commerce. I was also excited to represent the city at the 50th anniversary of the Association of Chinese Americans and to speak at their Healthy Garden Expo over the summer. Last year, I was also honored to speak at the Resolve Day celebration hosted by the Filipino American Community Council of Michigan. And finally, I enjoyed biking to our Civic Park over the summer to participate in the annual Vietnamese American picnic. My relationship with these multicultural groups has not gone unnoticed. So it was with a heavy heart that in January, just a couple of months ago, I was contacted by the nonprofit Bising Voices and asked to help arrange a vigil for the victims of the horrific California shooting. With less than two days to organize, we were able to host the vigil outside of our city hall. They came to us and to me because they knew that they would be welcome there. As a local government, we are limited in what laws and ordinances we can enact to combat these horrific shootings. But as mayor and as a mother, I want everyone to feel safe. And I want all our friends and neighbors to feel safe. And the one thing that I do know that I can do is to continue to support our multicultural communities. And I can show support, compassion, and understanding to those suffering from mental illness. And I can remind our county, state, and federal leaders that they need to be making mental health education and resources a priority. Mental illness crosses all lines of religion, culture, race, gender, age, wealth, and political affiliation. There are not enough support resources available for those suffering from a mental illness, and the stigma is still there. Far too often, those suffering from a mental illness are ignored or shunted between bureaucracies, struggling to maneuver through the system while trying to find help and instead finding another layer of stress. Incentives are needed to train more people to become mental health professionals. Those suffering from mental illness and their families need to be able to reach a mental health professional who can help when there is a crisis. In the US, one in five adults suffers from mental illness. There are about 100 people in this room, so look around. Statistically, 20 people here tonight are suffering from a mental illness. 20 healthy-looking people. So to those 20 people, no, you are not alone. To our business owners who understand and already treat mental illness with the same seriousness as physical illnesses, I commend and support your efforts. I recognize the limits of medical confidentiality but remind every business owner here that the mental health of your employees and their families can impact your business. Not properly treating mental illness can decrease productivity, increase absenteeism, and increase health care costs. So business owners, if you haven't already, I ask you to work with your teams to ensure that the mental health needs of your employees and their families are being met. Your bottom line depends on it. And if anyone here is looking to set up some kind of mental health type of business, I would love to have that in Madison Heights. I would love for us or for Hazel Park or just for our area to be known as a champion for everyone, including those with mental illnesses. All in all, 2022 was a year of growth and learning. I'm proud of our council and staff for our efforts to ensure that Madison Heights remains fiscally responsible and dedicated to staying accessible and responsive to the needs of our residents and businesses. I look forward to another year of working with all of our partners as we continue to support and grow our businesses. So thank you again to our hosts and to all of you who have joined us here this evening. Thank you, Mayor Grafstein. I actually got a preview of her speech uh, during the dry run earlier um, this week. And as a former economic development um, supervisor for the city of Mass Heights for almost 12 years, those new developments and redevelopments 
are those type of news that really get me excited. Okay, and I have to agree with Mayor Grafsey. The state of Madison Heights is bright, and then I'm very excited that the chamber has a role in a future in that bright future, or part in role in that future. Um, at this time, I want to um, please join me to welcome Mayor Mike Webb to give us a brief update on developments that are happening in Hazel Park. One more hand of applause for Mayor Grafstein. Well, I think we've had a wonderful time tonight. Don't you? Yeah. Yeah. You can all sit down and have a really good time. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Now, with that being said, I just want to say thank you for coming out tonight for the 2023 State of City Press. But before I begin, I want to thank all the people who made this possible tonight. First of all, first of all I want to thank the Madison Heights Hazel Park Chamber of Commerce for dedicating their time and resources and looking out for the betterment of our communities. And in particular, Linda Williams for all her hard work. Linda. Come on up here. Since we, this, this stops, I just want to say thank you for joining us. I think it's been a plus for our Chamber of Commerce to have an administrator that was very involved. And thank you. I also wish to thank the Madison Heights Mayor again, Mayor Gresty, and her administration that works hard to promote the Madison Heights City Council schools and everything else go on there. I did graduate from Madison, by the way. I only went there one year. <laughs> Georgie Animal Steel. Yeah, I remember that. Many years ago. I also want to go back to, you know, join, joining us tonight with our the partners with everything we do. There you go. Oh, oh there you go. With everything we do together. That's how we, you know, that Hazel Park Madison has been doing this a long time. And together we can do it for the future of the benefit of our residents. I also want to thank Mike Pierce, Dustin Leslie, Adam O'Connor, owners here at Eastern Palace for their allowing us to use a beautiful new facility. Thank you. And as well, James Gohorsky and Eric Nelson, the proprietors of Smoke Lotus, for this beautiful food and barbecue they provided for us tonight. Finally, I want to thank our residents here at Hazel Park who have entrusted us with the leadership of this fine city and responsibility that we do not take for granted. We work hard, hard and diligently here. Over the past decade, decade sorry, has brought many changes to our city, but change is nothing new for Hazel Park. We have come a long way from the former Hazel Park schools official Howard Beecher wrote a paper in 1920s about the unincorporated area that would later become the city of Hazel Park. He described how the area was recently populated by people seeking work in the auto industry and that the population surge created problems. Beecher wrote that the fire and police protection was inadequate, there was no garbage collection, sidewalks were usually covered with water, there was no parks or recreation, the sewer systems were inadequate, and many parts of the area had no running water. Just imagine if that all happened today. We'd all be puzzled what to do next. In order to survive, Hazel Park would have to become a city. After two failed attempts, Hazel Park voters approved incorporation in late December of 1941, at the dawn of World War II. Hazel Park was officially incorporated in 1942 after legislative approval. Our city then sent its young people off to war on the home front. Hazel Parkers rolled up their sleeves and helped build an arsenal of democracy here. The newly incorporated Hazel Park developed a reputation as hardworking, patriotic, blue-collar town after the war was over 
Hazel Park experienced another period of growth. But the demand of reasonably priced housing viewing new subdivisions. In the late 1940s, Hazel Park was approached by the state of Michigan to host a horse racing track, the Hazel Park Raceway, which opened in 1949 and provided an immediate economic boost to our city. At one point in the mid-50s, raceway revenues provided over half of Hazel Park's general fund. For decades, the race track was a regional entertainment destination and huge money maker for our city. Other signature businesses joined the track as popular mainstays in Hazel Park, such as Harmony House, Elias Brothers, Dukes, The Farmhouse, but times change. And then things change. In the 1990s, the horse racing industry began to decline. The casinos opened up in downtown Detroit. The racing industry took a nosedive. And the city began to really suffer financially. The state of, the state of Michigan cut funding to the cities. Long-time family businesses closed. As the founders passed on, and technology changed how we shot, ate, listened to music, changes our culture. But in order to survive, Hazel Park had to adapt to those many changes. And I'm proud to announce that we haven't just adapted to survive, we have adapted to thrive. First, we embrace our motto, the friendly city, and we made sure that everyone knew that everyone was welcome to Hazel Park, regardless of sexual orientation, race, religion, or political affiliation. All we ask is that everyone obey the law and be respectful of others. Respect goes a long way. Our residents pass villages when, we, when they need to. Our city employees tuck cuts when they needed to. Our administration was scrambled to find innovative, innovative solutions to keep Hazel Park alive and moving forward. We can now see those efforts paid off, with Hazel Park now developing a regional reputation as one of Metro Detroit's emerging hotspots. Our residential, commercial, and industrial property values are experiencing some of the strongest growth among local county communities. Our housing stock is growing and diversifying. Crime remains low, and we continue for, to provide excellent city services across the board. Thanks to our wonderful employees. Got to get that in there. Thanks a lot of hard work. We work cooperatively with the Hazel Park Schools to keep our students and school staff safe, to improve our recreation programs, to provide educational opportunities through the Hazel Park Promise Zone. I just want to take a second here. Mr. Klobuchar, we had a hot Promise Zone dinner just about a month ago. What was the, well, how much did we raise? Over 100, one, over $100,000 in one dinner. Oh. And that is there to help our students better advance their careers and their lives whether it be a college education or trade school, they will have the opportunity the first two years, if not more, from those donations and participation with all of our business leaders that are there and residents that provide and other volunteers and people that donate all the time to this fund. And if you want to join us next year, please get to the Hazel Park Facebook page, the next Promise Zone, it's usually about March, if I wait March next year, can please register. It's a good dinner, it's a good time, and we would really appreciate the support. Let's move on. So the Hazel Park has worked very hard to pursue all these grants that we're doing in our city. We're currently managing grants that we transform Green Acres Park at the Hazel Park Recreational Center. Another grant will create a pop-up business center on the South John R. Even a little further south than here. And still others will address lead line replacement, lead line replacement, sorry. Lighting, lighting pension fund relief, and bike lanes. Our building department is the busiest it's ever been. In the past couple of years, we've issued almost 700 
new business permits, building permits, sorry, for residential and commercial improvements, including 34 new houses and 45 new condos. Let me tell you, you ain't seen nothing yet. Wait till next year. We got a lot more coming as far as building. When the racetrack closed, Hazel Park worked with Ashley Capital to redevelop the property into the Tri-County Commerce City Center, allowing the city to fully embrace the new technology-based economy. We are home to the two electric battery companies, LG and Agrisol, along with high-tech companies like Dakota Integrated Systems, Hilex Controls, and Mayfield Engineering. Just think about a few years maybe. But just down the street, the Tri-County Tri Commerce Center, on 10 Mile is XR Terra, an erasing company that we've that was cleaning radiation from the Chernobyl nuclear plant area before the Russian invasion. These companies are building the substrate sustainable future, and we're so, we're so happy to have them here in Hazel Park. We've talked about them before. And I, I believe there's a representative from Isol Terra here. Yeah. They've done a lot. They've really created a lot of uh, news and press for our city in the beginning before a lot of other businesses started coming here. And it was, I want to say thank you for bringing that to our town. Thank you. Now, we got some other businesses here. Tony's Ace Hardware, a long standing business. Doug's Delight. Have renovated their exteriors, and we have welcomed two new coffee shops as well: Java Hut and Hazel Park. <laughs> one on the north end, one on the south end. So I think everybody's covered with coffee. <laughs> uh, maybe great, Mayo Grain and Frame, and Louis Pizza continue to be the thriving restaurants with national reputations, but there is wild new buzz about another area of town. And here we are right at ground zero. In Hazel Park South End, we all know an old time business like the Oak Gardens, Argyle's Meat Market, and the Blue Dot Cafe are never coming back. So we've worked hard to reinvent the South End. And those efforts are paying off. The video please. Hi, I'm Ed Klobuchar, and I've had the distinct honor of serving as city manager for Hazel Park for the last 20 years. I want to talk to you about an area of the city that we've been working very hard to develop, an area for which we have a long-term vision to be a walkable destination spot with restaurants, shops, and more. I'm talking about the South End John R. Already, we have seen that hard work bear fruit. Here at the corner of John R. and Madge, the Eastern Palace Club has been completely rejuvenated into a delightful, immersive, and inclusive Key West-themed bar. And inside the club, Smoke Lotus Barbecue has set up shop in the kitchen with a wide range of tasty offerings for patrons and carryouts. So be sure to come thirsty and come hungry. Just to the south of the Eastern Palace Club, we have another great restaurant that's open called D's Quick Bites. They have Mexican food, burgers, and standard diner's fare as well. And it's proven to be very popular in the few weeks that it's been open. In addition to D's, we have a coffee shop that's just opened called Hazel Park, a dog grooming business and two hair salons that will fully fill with tenants, a strip mall that's been vacant for many years. Across the street, we have the old Salem Market Building, which has recently sold. An upscale convenience store as well as a bakery are planned for that location to better serve the needs of Hazel Park's residents. We think these new businesses and the businesses to come in the South End area will create a new synergy to make this a destination point for Hazel Park. We plan for this area to be a walkable, attractive area 
with many am amenities and conveniences for both residents and visitors. I think uh, the South End and Hazel Park still is on the lower cost per square foot, comparatively speaking to other areas. We do have people moving in that uh, used to own in Ferndale or Royal Oak or rented that now see this area being extremely affordable. And demographically speaking, we're, we're um, and geographically, we're located in just a fantastic spot for easy access to the city or, or going north into the suburbs. This is like actually uh, uh, businesses that you can frequent on a daily basis, pull in, have a bite of something, do a little shopping, that kind of thing. And it's going to be an amazing spot. Like We are definitely going to be the epicenter of the heart it feels amazing. I mean, to, to be you know riding the wave of it is going to be incredible. I mean, there's there's great stuff happening here. All I can say, the, you know, the south end of John R. that runs from eight to nine mile is an area that's going to continue to grow. Um, we have new businesses coming in, new residents, and it's a great opportunity to, to be in a great city like Hazel Park that is uh, getting a lot of the credibility that it deserves now. Here in Hazel Park. We have a long-term vision for the development and redevelopment of this long underutilized area of our city. We believe in a holistic approach, using innovative techniques and strategic partnerships with businesses to secure and attract new investment in our city. And we believe these strategies will better situate us to be more competitive in the Southeast Michigan area. By fostering a business-friendly climate, we believe we have a better operating platform for the city that will create a virtuous cycle of city development and better resilience during times of economic challenge. For more information about starting a business in Hazel Park, contact the Hazel Park City Manager's Office at 248-546-4060. We look forward to hearing from you. Well, thank you, uh, Peg Kovacher. I want to say something. It gets you excited about Hazel Park and, and the future of where we're headed. You know, we have so much going on. We have more going on that I can't even really talk about part of redeveloping new homes, hip -hop, uh, condos, and, and, and other apartments for economically based people that need help getting in this, uh, you know, that can't necessarily afford those high price rents. We're trying to get them at, at a lower price if we can to make it fair across the board and diversify our community. But I do want to say discussions are underway with other places and with our administration as we speak. Redevelopment of the CBS on John R., the old CBS that is now just a piece of concrete. And another developer is currently beginning the process of developing the property north of that site, where it used to be, when, you know, it used to be a Tulsa station in the Sullivan's auto repair. That whole corner is another developer. When, they, when it's completed, these projects will completely change the face of Hazel Park. Finally, the derelict landmark church property, this is what I'm talking about, what has been sold, which will, pro was pro will provide an opportunity for more of those new housing we're talking about to come to our community. And that is what gets you excited. That's how you can take that property and make it more conducive to the neighborhoods for other neighborhood people and you want to get the kids here to go to school, turn our area around. You know, it's been 30 years since, you know, when I started raising my kids. Now it's another cycle going through watching our kids do this thing. And it's exciting to see that. It's truly an exciting time, like I said, here in Hazel Park, in the state of the, state of, state of the city of Hazel Park is stronger than ever, and we are not going back. We're moving forward. Thank you for coming on today. Another final round of applause for both Mayor Mike White and Mayor Roger Rankin. That also includes a team that put that uh, city update together. As you know, it takes a, a little bit of a lot of work behind the scenes to put this presentation together. So thank you to the city team that helped both mayors. And I agree with both of them. It truly is special and exciting time in both cities. All right, the last part of the program is something new for the state of the cities. Uh, we added this new item to the program. 
to get the perspective of our business leaders on some of the top issues and challenges such as workforce, inflation, supply chain, and if we have a little bit of time, I know we're running a little, just a few minutes late, 15 minutes or so, so hopefully we can make up for it. Um, the importance of mental and physical wellness. Well, when we first explored the idea of having this panel speaking, I immediately thought of my good friend and good colleague from the economic development world, my good friend Lauren Royston, who is currently serving as the Community Affairs Manager at Consumers Energy. Lauren is one popular lady, in, not only in the economic development world, but she's quite famous with all of the area chambers as well. So I knew that I had to call on her early. In fact, I think I called her on New Year's Eve and tell her, can we have you for this State of the Cities event? So in the interest of time, um, I, she did provide me with a full uh, bio on her, but just know that she's been um, many, many years in the economic development world. But Laura, come up and uh, give us a little bit of an update on consumer energy, and then we're going to get right into the panel speaking. Thank I'm Community Affairs Manager with Consumers Energy. <clears throat> of course, I want to say thank you to the Madison Heights, uh, Hazel Park Chamber, for having um, me having consumers. Okay. <laughs> I feel like it's loud in my ear, <laughs> but you all can't hear me. Okay. So, um, if you've seen me before, you know I'd like to share a little bit of information about Consumers Energy. You know that we are more than the folks that send you your monthly bill. You probably got your bill this winter. You know, it was pretty mild, you know, that little cold snap in December. Um, and thank God I'm not in TE right now. So, whew, your gas provider. Um, but People, Planet, Prosperity. That's our triple bottom line that we live by our guiding pillars. Um, we believe that a company can stand for more than profits and that we can apply our talents for good. So we work and strive to have a positive impact on the world. And I wanted to share with all the businesses here today that consumers' energy is beyond business. Um, we support the businesses both large and small. We know that small business is the backbone of any economy. Um, but we want you all to know that we can provide some meaningful assistance to you all. Um, in a variety of ways, uh, finding incentives and instant rebates on a range of clean energy programs, uh, learning how to get sustainable business using environmentally sustainable principles, uh, providing new business opportunities through Pure Michigan Business Connect, um, market analytics for small businesses through our size up tool, that's a free thing for all Michigan businesses <clears throat> that Consumers Energy provides. Um, working with your utility bill and connecting you to potential sources of state and federal relief. And finally, how to become a supplier with Consumers Energy. We have all of that information, so please, please check us out, consumersenergy.com slash business, and we'll connect you with all of the resources and services that we have. So, having said that, it is my pleasure to now introduce your panel members, you see these lovely chairs and microphones, they're waiting some bodies to sit there. So, first up, we have uh, Kurt Gore. We need to get up. Tim McConaughey from Emerald Steel slash Limited Position, my other new DFF, I got two of them today. <laughs> uh, Melissa March, uh, Madison Heights City Manager. And Ed Paul the Hazel Park City Manager. <laughs> okay. okay. So I know we've heard a little bit of information from the, the cities of from Hazel Park and from Madison Heights uh, leaders right now. But first, can you all go down the road, give a brief in, uh, introduction, and then just tell us something about your business, your business, something that you want to share specifically about your community. Okay, starting with Tim. Oh, I'm sorry. Sorry, starting with Kurt. Hello, everyone. Um, Kurt Gore, um, owner of BDT Smoke Shop, uh, Bumblebee Gas, Dry Ice, 
and uh, future owner of many other businesses here in Hazel Park. Our family has been part of Hazel Park for now 50 years. We're celebrating our 50th anniversary. Um, yes, well, we're now third generation, so we have my uh, son and two daughters actually working for the company now. Um, very proud to be here in Hazel Park. We all actually call ourselves Hazel Park residents as well. Um, looking forward to a bright future here in Hazel Park and with our neighbors in Madison Heights. So, um, yes. All right. Oh, that's good. Tim McConaughey, the general counsel for Emerald Steel Processing and Shannon Precision Testing. We have um, Emerald's primary locations on Stevenson between 13 and 14. Shannon Precision Testing, we have our first manufacturing plant on Stevenson Highway and our distribution center on 14 Mile. So we've got quite a presence in Madison Heights. Thank you, Linda. Linda has been a great contact throughout the years. Um, and the city too. Um, everyone here from Madison Heights. But, you know, we also do business in Auburn Hills, the Holly Township, and uh, it matters. It matters what city you're in. It matters what people are in the city. Um, we feel extremely welcome in Madison Heights when we meet something. We try not to ask for too much, but when we do, the city has stepped up and helped us. And that's, that's what keeps it, uh, businesses in cities. It, it matters a lot, as you know it's. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. I'm Ed Clocher. I have had the distinct honor and privilege of serving as Hazel Park City Manager for the last 21 years. So I'm pleased and proud to welcome you to Hazel Park to our new thriving and growing South Bend. Uh, you just heard from our mayor and uh, watched our video, so I'll be brief. We'll, we'll please that you're here. Speak up, very proud of this place. We are very proud of these in Palace and Smith Place. I'm Melissa Marsh, I'm the city manager for Madison Heights, and, and to keep us on track of time, I will try it back over for the panel conversation. Okay. All right, thank you all. First, hot topic, workforce. I don't know, so many things to, to think about. Um, what are some new roles and job, job, function, job functions that are needed immediately in each of your industries? I know that there's been lots of changes from pre-pandemic to post-pandemic. What are you seeing now with the workforce? Are you, do you have workforce needs? And if you do, have those needs changed dramatically over the last couple of years? Well, I can say as a retail business owner here in Hazel Park, we really struggled throughout the COVID times. Uh, the ability to hire new employees and retain employees that had been with us for a number of years was very difficult. Um, I'm glad to say now that uh, things are changing. Um, prospective employees are very much attracted to Hazel Park, so it makes um, hiring uh, some of the new employees a lot easier. So uh, things are changing now, and I think they're, they're getting better here in Hazel Park. Well, the number one, <clears throat> excuse me, the number one concern for us, I think all the manufacturing is finding people. People want to come, show up on time, don't leave early, work a full week. Um, we offer every benefit you can think of. We train in-house. We use local community colleges for training. Anyone who wants to go to college will pay 100% of your college tuition. No strings attached. You can quit the day after you get your degree if you want. But we don't think you will. Um, fully paid health care. Our employees do not get your premiums. We have an HSA. We have our own enrollment or 401k with matching funds, mental conditions. People are, to the extent they're not coming, it's not because of, for material reasons. It's simply hard to find people. And some have left the state. Um, other industries, cannabis and others, have taken up some of the available people. Um, we have had some success. We go to every job fair you can think of. Uh, we go to the, com the uh, community colleges. We go to the trade schools. We have headhunters looking. That has picked up a little bit lately, but it's the number one issue that we have. So if any of you, now, any, anyone interested in manufacturing, to us, manufacturing is not a job, it's a career. Most of our turnover rate is uh, around 1%. So most people come and work for Shannon and or Emerald, they really, for the most part, don't leave unless they decide to change 
uh, their occupation significantly. So is there, it's right here in Madison Heights, Return one auto motor supplier, return one motor supplier here seven years in a row. It's here, and uh, you would think that would be pretty easy to find lots of people, but it isn't. So if you know 10 or 12 people, they would love to come work for us. Uh, truckers do, oh yeah, truckers are hard to find. Uh, that's our, we'll get Linda, we're gonna get her a CDL license to get out there. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want me on the road. Right. So that's the number one issue. I mean, any company that is decently capitalized can build a building, buy equipment. If you don't have, it doesn't mean much if you don't have people. So we do what we can to provide a safe environment with uh, a pretty good atmosphere. And has it uh, upticked a little bit? We do a little bit better, but there's still a long ways to go. Thank you. Uh, Cities, just like the private sector, we're having difficulty sometimes finding uh, new employees to come work for us. It's especially difficult for us to hire police officers and firefighters. So we're, we're constantly looking, we're doing things uh, innovatively now. Uh, it used to be that we would only hire people to equip themselves to the police academy or had prior service. Now we're actually, on a case-by-case basis, funding people to go to school to become police officers. So uh, again, it's a struggle, uh, you know, with the great resignation and much of the, the baby boom retiring, there's a worker shortage. And it's especially difficult now to hire police officers given the environment that we're in. But I think that's changing a little bit, and uh, I'm hopeful that it is. Uh, we do a pretty good job of retaining employees once they come to work for Hazel Park and to find out what a good place we are to work for. So, uh, if you know anybody that's interested in a police officer, a firefighter, paramedic, or they have a CDL and they're actually interested in working for our department of public works, the water department, it's hard to get miles ago. We're going after it. I don't have much left to say because Sorry. Madison Heights pains are the same as Hazel Parks. Um, police and fire, of course, are our biggest pain areas, and we have tried to. Um, really stress to younger people, so high school students, if you have children, um, those kinds of things, that this is a great career. Um, not only are you making a very good wage, but you're actually giving back and making a difference in people's lives. And I think that's one thing that I try to stress to anybody who talks to me about local government is it's more than a career. It really is something that you have to be passionate about and you can really make a difference. So we are good about retaining people, but it's very difficult to find these public safety positions right now. So uh, this is a time to do a shameless plug. I know I heard some folks from the Oakland County Michigan Works Office. Are you still here? All right. There we go. We have Laura and Drew. and Drew here right now. So have you all utilized the services of the Michigan Works? They can help you with your recruiting and other business services. Make sure you're contacting them to help you with your recruiting. So that was that uh, shameless plug. I wanted to make sure I, I put it <laughs> immediately. So business meets us. Okay. Or some job seeker. <laughs> yeah, so please do. If you need help with, you know, looking to recruit your talent, innovative ways to do that, please contact your local Michigan where so we have someone from the Troy office and someone from the Oak Park office um, here to help. Let's move on and let's talk about um, inflation. What are ways that businesses, local governments can do to control some of the cost and expenses to adjust for the prices? What are you all doing to manage what's happening now with inflation? I know governments, you all have set budgets for the year. How are you all managing that process right now with the immediate inflation? Oh, I get to start first. <laughs> uh, one of the things that we're doing is for bigger purchases like fire engines and those type of things, which cost upwards a million dollars, is we do a lot of planning ahead. So we do a six year plan ahead for our capital improvement and we procure those things upward to two years in advance to really curve the inflation or the price increases. That's also true for supply and demand, so it, it takes almost 24 months now to get these vehicles in place. But we try to be proactive, we try to set money aside and go ahead and start um, purchasing those things or getting in line for purchasing those things to save ourselves money when we can. Um, we also try to be innovative in our purchasing, so we just bought a new senior bus and instead of just doing an RFP and buying a brand new bus, our DPS really scoured across the country and found a used refurbished bus that was 
like what I do to us and went to Ohio and purchased that. So just by doing those simple little things, we saved about $50,000, which might not be much to some businesses, but to Madison Heights, it's a huge deal. So we try to do those kinds of things on a regular basis. Like Bass and Heights, Hazel Park, we try to be frugal with our purchasing, but I'll talk a little bit about something that we do in a different direction. And that's we work cooperatively together with Madison Heights and some with Ferndale and Royal Oak to save money and try to do things uh, together. For instance, we're part of this healthcare consortium called Premise Health. And what this enables us to do, we all are self-funded with our health insurance. So Premise Health allows us you have our employees utilize a services of a physician at zero cost, and they can get many generic drugs at zero cost. In Hazel Park, we let our employees go during work time uh, to see the physician, and that's a big cost saving for us, and we think it's really dramatically improved employee health. So if we're smart and we're innovative, we can touch on two things at once, workforce development and retention, and we can save money in health care costs, which we're going to do. Something I want you all to understand that at the city level, unlike the private sector, we can't raise prices to keep pace with the cost of inflation. Our funds are locked in by the Headley Amendment and Proposal A of uh, 1994, so they keep our revenues from property tax and advice unless we can actually grow with new construction. So we have to be very innovative in order to make sure that we're able to continue to provide outstanding services in this inflationary break. Yeah, I'm responding to inflation is uh, we have limited capability. Some costs we can pass along to customers. When we do that, we're completely transparent, show them exactly how the cost increased and then we don't have any option but to do it. We have some tools we can delay major purchases to the extent we can in the hope you know, the two years from now prices are be stable. Well, for all you know, they'll be up at that point too. But one thing in the auto industry, uh, it's ingrained in every supplier, better, faster, more efficient, all the time. So the, it's a little bit natural for us to do that. We multiple source our critical commodities to try to negotiate better prices when we can. But the fact of the matter is, a lot has gone up in, in the price for our suppliers, too, and we understand that. And we have to absorb it when we can. We will hit to the bottom line, pass along what we can, be more efficient. It's it's not good, but we'll be there when the smoke clears and we we'll return to something a little more normal. I'll keep it kind of short here. Um, we found that we've had a really tighten up our belt over the last couple of years. The, as uh, Tim and uh, the other two guests uh, have said, that the costs have gone up. And unfortunately, we haven't been able to raise prices to keep up with the costs. So we find ourselves reevaluating budgets a lot more often uh, and just try to operate a little bit uh, on a trimmer um, budget just to keep things active and uh, to keep competitive with the rest of the market. So on the flip side of inflation, there's supply chain. Um, so not only are things costing more, but trying to get your hands on some, some material can be quite difficult. I know in the utility industry, we're struggling right now. We had those series of storms a couple of weeks ago. Now there is a shortage in transformers. So there is going to be a lag in time. If you need a new gas meter on your home because you've decided to purchase a generator, there is a six to nine month delay on that. So again, it's just trying to get your supplies. So what are our governments and our businesses doing to mitigate the supply chain issues that we have right now? <laughs> well, okay, obviously, to a certain extent, we are, we are deglobalizing a little bit. And it's going to take some time for us to onshore, uh, nearshore, and friendshore some of those uh, manufacturing capabilities and natural resources. Things are changing. You know, the, obviously, Russia is invaded in Ukraine. Our relationship with China is still. So things are a little bit different. So it's helping to drive inflation. And it's also uh, it's causing delays. Things that you could just buy or order 
uh, a couple years ago, but now it takes some time. So we have to be smart. You have to make sure that you have a maintenance schedule. We have to make sure that you have some supplies on hand that can be at risk uh, for a supply chain. Yeah, it's mostly real. I'm not sure all of it is. Uh, Sometimes you hear supply chain issues, the reason I can't meet my obligation, and sometimes that's just an excuse, frankly. But to the extent we have difficulty attracting additional workers, everyone else does too. Some of the supply chain issues are totally real. If you want to order a new high load today, you don't go to the show and buy one. It's a 54 week wait for a high load. And new equipment that we used to be able to order six to eight months is now 20 months. So what it has done is required even more detailed planning, trying to anticipate what your future needs are going to be, and order sometimes well in advance, and you have to swallow hard when you do it. But um, our customers expect their parts to be on time, period. So we have to adjust and do what we can. And uh, frankly, there isn't a lot except to make the adjustments from our end. I wish I could fix it. So do you have any parting comments from our panel list today? We'll start from our great host, Tim, and move it on down. So I just wanted to thank the city manager, uh, the mayor, and the departments of Hazel Park. Everything that we do here on the south end would not be possible without the support of, again, the administration, city council. Um, I talked to others in in the cities and they ask me, well, why are you in Hazel Park? And, and I say because there's open arms there, they attract business, they know what they're doing, and they support us in everything that we do. So that's why I've invested significantly in Hazel Park, called Hazel Park my home, because I truly believe in the future of Hazel Park. And thank you, everybody in the administration, public works, um, fire, police, thank you for all you do. You make me very proud to be part of the city. I have to follow that. <laughs> I mean, open arms. That plus even more for Madison Heights. It's amazing. No, I, I'm very full. I, obviously, the other business owners are you know, here today because we're all neighbors. Madison Heights or Hazel Park, whatever it is, we all want the best for the city because it pays us back. Right? We have a clean, clean environment, supportive neighbors, I 75 in our backyard. Uh, to the extent we can, we do business with other companies in Madison Heights. That's the first one we look for, see what we can do. So, you know, otherwise you end up with a little bit of a declining commercial area, right? One business leaves, another leaves, another leaves. But then they get very much the opposite of Madison Heights. And that's very much to the credit of the administration, current and past administrations, and for all of us, for doing what we can to, uh, to be good neighbors and good citizens of Madison Heights. We've had a good run here in Hazel Park recently, and first and foremost, I have to thank a wonderful mayor and council, Mike Webb, Alyssa Sullivan, and Andy McGill. Uh, all the support that have been supportive of my initiatives, and I'm deeply appreciative of them, and I couldn't do anything that I do now without their support. I want to thank my awesome department heads, and I always tell them in every staff meeting, I have the best department heads in the state of Michigan. I will bash them against them. Oh. It's not really I'm too happy to make it. And finally, I want to thank uh, the two business owners here. Because this gentleman is right. Without capitalism and without the free market and without people taking risks, starting businesses, investing their money, their effort, where tough sweat equity and make this business go, we wouldn't be here today. There would be no government, there would be no school. You're absolutely right. That's fine. I agree with you. And I'm so grateful to the members of the Hazel Park and Madison Heights Chamber of Commerce. When we walk in the side, we are sister cities with Madison Heights. We work together. If Madison Heights needs help, Hazel Park will come. And I'm sure if Madison Heights will come, if Hazel Park needs help. So we work together, and uh, I look forward to a much better future in this pandemic. Thank you all for being
size and Hudson, four size with us before my heads, even though half of them snuck out. <laughs> 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 so I don't know about that. Uh, but thank you to the mayor and city council. Sometimes I go to strategic planning with what I think is a crazy idea, and they really have embraced um, any harebrained thing that we've come up with. And you saw the fruit of those labors in Rosalind Grafstein's um, speech today. So it's really working out well for Madison Heights. I think we're moving forward in a very positive direction, and that really is a tribute to all the businesses and the residents in Madison Heights. So thank you again for coming out tonight. I think this was a, a fabulous event, and I hope to see you guys next year. All right, one more round of applause for our fabulous panel members. And can we give a huge, huge round of applause, standing ovation for Linda Williams. Thank you, tonight has been wonderful.